Welcome to our family that is joining us in our virtual community. We bring you greetings from the beautiful Monterey Center for Spiritual Living. So I was, um, as I was preparing for a service this morning, I was just checking the temperature to see, okay, how early do I need to get to the center to, her, to turn the heater on so it's comfortable when uh, the congregants begin to arrive? And, uh, you know, how shall I dress? You know, heavyweight, lightweight, medium weight, whatever. And so I, I have these electronic devices. So my computer was showing a temperature of 64. My smartwatch that I wear was showing a temperature of 69. When I got into my car, it was showing a temperature of 73. <laughs> so all of these are, are giving me different signals. And so I, I checked just a few minutes before coming downstairs this morning, and finally the smartwatch and the computer are in sync. They're both showing, uh, no, the smartwatch no, the computer has changed again. The computer is now showing 59. About a half an hour ago, it was showing 64. So even though we have this thing that is controlled electronically in the atmosphere, it just shows that there's change going on in the atmosphere, that there isn't anything that is really consistent out there. However, the one thing that remains unchanged is spirit, regardless of what temperature we may be looking at, what the mama to we may be looking at, or whatever else is out there. Spirit is unchangeable. And so we say welcome to June. And this month we are embarking on a new theme, uh, living everyday wonder, and we're looking at the body. And this is what our focus will be for the month of June. There are a number of events and activities that happen in, in all months. And we have opportunities now in June to look at a few of the interesting things that are happening. Some are, re some are repeaters, some are a little unique. Um, we begin by acknowledging that this is Pride Month. This is the month long celebration and it's a call for greater unity and visibility and, equ and equity within the LGBT community. Celebrating the freedom to live each one's individual birthright authentically and without the false mask of pretending who we are not. Pride also acknowledges those with a range of other identities, including those who are intersex, non-binary, asexual, pansexual, aromatic, two-spirit, or who identify in other ways or are questioning their sexual or gender, or gender identity as a form of expression. We also acknowledge that this is National PTSD Awareness Month. It is African American Music Appreciation Month. Also Father's Day and Summer Solstice to mention some of the significant ones. There's some other interesting ones that I looked at. Um, National Moonshine Day was June the 2nd. <laughs> I had to throw that in to acknowledge my Louisiana roots. And then June 3rd was Love Conquers All Day. Can you imagine that there is a day designated on the calendar for Love Conquers All? And we know in our spiritual community and as part of our spiritual practices that love is the only power and that it is something that is practiced all the time. It is practiced every day. It is the essence of who we are. And as I mentioned earlier, today is World Environment Day. And this is the largest international day for celebrating and taking care of the environment, which began back in 1973. And all of this is building up to our theme for the month, which is body. And this is an invitation for us to explore how to live everyday wonder through the magnificent and magical creation that is our body. The key here is to recognize the body that we have right here and right now is an expression of God. The body that we have right here and right now 
is an expression of God. By loving it, learning from it, listening to it, we come closer and closer to the divine. And so our topic for this morning is welcome to the temple, the temple of our body. All bodies are good bodies, inherently good and valuable, deserving of love and respect. The body is a tool for spiritual connection and understanding and is to be respected as such. We did not come into this planet hating our bodies. However, we may have grown up with social messaging that created an adversarial relationship with our bodies, creating this false belief that the body is not acceptable, the body is not acceptable for one reason or another. And some of these we may have even said or thought within ourselves. Too fat or too thin, too short, too tall, too brown, too black, too white, too one thing or another, fill in the blank. We may have the ideal body, the ideal image of how the body could look or operate. Feeding that image, we tell our body that what it is right now in this moment is or is not acceptable. The message that we feed to our body in this very moment is telling the body that it is or is not acceptable as it is. There's a wonderful book that I have in my library. Um, it's called The Body is Not an Apology, The Power of Radical Self-Love. And it's written by an activist and author um, and well-known uh, talk show host, Sonia Renee Taylor. And she writes, our beliefs about our bodies disproportionately impact those whose race, gender, sexual orientation, ability, and age deviate from our default notions, our default notions. The further from the default, the greater the impact. We're all affected, she says, but not equally. And so making peace with our body is an act of revolution. You ever considered that making peace with your body is an act of revolution? This was new information for me, a new idea. Our bodies are magnificent and magical conduits between God and our individual consciousness and are to be celebrated in a way that allows us to experience the world in which we live, to experience this world with joy and love and compassion and acceptance and embracing each other for the unique qualities and attributes that we bring into this life experience. Ernest Holmes says this in our Science of Mind textbook, our body is a part of the kingdom of God. Therefore, there is a spiritual pattern at the center of it. The word body as we use it in science and mind means the objective manifestation of the invisible principle of life. Our bodies evolve to allow consciousness to function on this plane. Our bodies are part of the evolution of our consciousness that allows us to function on this plane. We would never look at a beautiful oak tree and tell it that it ought to be a willow. We would never judge a lily by the same standard as a fern. Have you ever compared your body to another as though it should be something other than what it is? Everything, absolutely everything that exists so far is the divine, fully expressing itself. Everything, everything that is existing is for the purpose of the divine to fully express itself. So our bodies exactly as they are, are necessary for the divine to express itself through each one of us right here and right now. And so rather than compare it to another and disparage it, what if we each loved our body 
for being the unique and wonderful thing that it is. And I'm feeling right now just to invite everybody to give yourself a hug. Just give yourself a hug. Love, love on your body. Love on your body. Thank it for being this beautiful vessel that carries us from one place to another. Also in our Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes writes, the body expresses it's a spirit intelligence being lent by the consciousness which permits it. We're often taught that the physical is somehow less than the spiritual and we forget that our bodies are spiritual. Our bodies are responsive to our thoughts. Therefore, there's this reminder to become conscious of the messages that we send to our bodies with our minds. Our thoughts create the effect that we live in. The message that we send, whether it's not good enough because of its appearance or that it's physical and therefore undeserving of love and respect, or that is just a biochemical machine and nothing important with nothing important to say. These are not without consequence. These messages that we send are not without, con without consequence. In addition to be being careful about the thoughts we think, we need to tune into our bodies and find out what messages it has been carrying. Our bodies are not simply living machines. They are the temples in which God is able to live, breathe, move, and have its very being the way it wants to. Our bodies are more than vessels for us to drive around. They are dynamic and expressive creations. The pain of trauma that we push away with our minds often gets stuck in the body, and the only way to release it is to feel it. We have to feel the pain and we have to express the trauma to release it. In the powerful book uh, by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, he uses the term emotional pain body. And he describes it as the invisible entity of pain that accumulates through life. This starts with the painful experience from childhood and begins to ex and expands from there. Tolly says that the pain is a mass of negative energy that can occupy our body and mind. He also describes it as being like a parasite, living in you and feeding on you physically, mentally, and emotionally. It feeds on the negative energy that is created when we sweep up the emotions, when we sweep them up and put them under the rug, if you will. It produces an identity of pain within the body. Events, conversations, thoughts can trigger the pain body, especially if it hits a nerve with a familiar pain pattern from the past. And he offers this example. Your pain body may include many experiences of feeling like you could never live up to your other sibling's achievements, whether it's an older sibling or a younger sibling. And I'm just offering this as an example for those who may have grown up with siblings. Or if you did not grow up with siblings, perhaps you were compared to a cousin or a niece or another relative, or perhaps a neighbor, a good neighbor. What our parents and others tell us about the new house that the sibling just bought is likely to trigger a pain in our body in response that we may feel angry, defensive, or inferior. The good news though is that the pain body only has as much power as we give to it. It only has as much power as we give to it. This is what we sometimes identify as taking our power back, you know, reclaiming our power. Learning to live harmoniously with our bodies, we must learn to listen to them. By learning to listen to them, we will likely find 
their discomfort eases. Listening to our bodies, we may find that the discomfort eases. Once they no longer have to sort through pain to be heard, they can share with us a pearl of deep divine wisdom and intuition. So again, it's about listening. And we have the tools that we teach in Science of Mind and in New Thought. And those tools are spiritual mind treatment, our affirmations, our meditations, our times of inner stillness, where we are aware of the all prevailing presence of spirit with us right here and right now. Learning to love our bodies as they are. We open to the opportunity to heal traumas and wounds that hide in our physical selves. Body awareness is a practice of being very present in this moment, not about judging the body as good or bad, thinking about the past or worrying about the future. By opening to feeling how the body feels without judging it, we open to the opportunity to receive insight and wisdom through the miraculous and wondrous thing that it is. It is not anti-spiritual to tend to the needs of the body, and including the use of medications when we need so that it may be allowed to heal. Ernest Holmes writes this in The Essential Earnest. Since we cannot walk on water, we take a boat or an aspirin. We cannot walk on water. So we take a boat, we get an aspirin. Whatever it is that is affirming, that is life affirming, that is life giving, that does not create a separation between us and spirit, does not create a separation between us and our fellow humans on this journey. This is what is required as part of our listening to the body. Again, our bodies are magnificent and magnificent, are magnificent and magical conduits between God and our individual consciousness. And they ought to be celebrated for the way they allow us to experience the world in which we live. And so I offer this personal practical application for the week. And I have asked our tech team to place this in the Zoom comments for our Zoom family and into our, the comment section on our Facebook Live page. This week, sit with this idea in two questions. I'm gonna offer an idea and then two questions that I invite you to sit with this week. And the idea is, my body is perfect, exactly how it is. And my body is a divine tool that is absolutely vibrating with the flow of source. My body is perfect, exactly as it is. And my body is a divine tool that is absolutely vibrating with the flow of source. And with this affirmation in mind, ask yourself, how might I move about my life differently if I absolutely knew these were to be true? How would I move through life differently if I knew that these were absolutely, to be, were absolutely true? And the second question is, how can I work toward becoming friends with my body and listening to its voice? How can I work toward becoming friends with my body and listening to its voice? And let us say together our affirmation for the week. My body is the house of the divine on earth. Let's say this together. My body is the house of the divine on earth. Let us pray together. Recognizing that this house that I live in, this consciousness that is expressing through me, 
is just one example of the all prevailing presence of spirit that is expressing in its fullness in all places at all times. Declaring this to be the truth for myself, I declare it to be the truth for all beings, for everyone, everywhere, knowing that this one life, this one power and this one presence encompasses all that there is. And I speak this word this morning, celebrating the body, celebrating my temple, celebrating the temple of all who are expressing life in its various forms, in its fullness, in all ways, in all places. Recognizing that as we celebrate the differences, the uniqueness of each body, that we honor this divine expression that is before us, that is a reflection of the life force of spirit that is circulating circulating in the atmosphere, circulating its magnificence, circulating its magic, circulating its glow, circulating its love. And so in caring for the body temple, through exercise, through nutrition, through hydration, through mental right thinking, through listening to that which is uplifting and affirming, and not buying into the mass distractions that we're constantly bombarded with is another way of simply honoring the temple, honoring this holy space that we reside in, in this expression on this, as we travel along this journey. Knowing that this is true for everyone everywhere, I celebrate with those who are joining in the celebrations and events that are celebrating life, however they may be identified, recognizing that each one walking on this journey is an example of spirit in action, of love in form, of joy in action, of compassion in action. Blessing each one who is experiencing a transition in life, whether that transition be a joyful one, an uplifting one, or that transition be one that is causing us to go inward and to reflect on memories, to be with whatever the sadness may be, recognizing that on the flip side of sadness is joy, that sadness only endures for a moment. And as the expression says, joy comes in the morning. And morning is whenever we choose it to be. It is not bound by the mechanical clock that is created by this human experience. Morning is when we awaken to the divinity that we are. Morning is when we recognize the all prevailing presence of spirit. And so for this and so much more, I am eternally grateful. And I release this word, I release this treatment, I release this service back into the law, which always says yes. And I just allow it to be so. And I invite you to affirm this with me, if this be your truth, by saying, and so it is, and so it is. Thank you to all who have joined us this morning and uh, offer this as a reminder to both our in-person community and our virtual community that our practitioners and ministers here at the Monterey Center are available to support you in prayer and in spiritual coaching and spiritual guidance along this journey. You may find our contact information on our website and also in our newsletter. We invite you to call us to reach out and to allow us to celebrate life with you, regardless of the circumstance that you may find yourself in in any given moment. And now is our opportunity to participate in the flow of abundance, the circulation that is known as money or spiritual coins, however it is that you describe it. We do have an affirmation of abundance that I ask us to say now together. I recognize the presence of God within as the source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. 
with gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And so it is. Thank you for the ways that you continue to support our center. And you may mail in your donations to the center. The address is on the screen. You may text to give, uh, and that telephone number is on your screen. Uh, and you may also contribute to our secure website, um, cslmonterey.org. You may find that on our website and also in our e-newsletter. And for those who are here in person this morning, uh, we do have our donation box on our welcoming table, and we invite you to uh, make your contributions there. Also would like to encourage you to purchase a copy of this month's Science of Mind magazine. We have them available here at the center uh, for a cost of $5, and we will calculate the tax. Uh, for those of you who are joining us virtually, I encourage you to take a subscription out for the magazine. This month's issue is fabulous. I've read quite a few of the articles and the writer for this month is one of my favorites and that is Dr. David Alt. Um, each, each lesson, each um, meditation, each article serves to uplift and also prepares us for our spiritual living circle that takes place at, on the fourth Sunday of each month where we come together and discuss the articles that are in the magazine. So we encourage you to do that. And for those who are in our virtual community, we welcome you and invite you to return next week uh, as we continue our theme, the body during this month. And the message is loving this body. And so we say thank you and good morning to our virtual community. God bless you, we love you, and we thank you.